All right, this spreader, three vein spreader, the plate, the center plate here has broken off. Um, it looks like cast aluminum, maybe eighth inch thick. Um, so I'm gonna try TIG welding this, not having hardly any aluminum welding experience at all. Um, in the internet, people on the internet say I should probably JB weld this, and I tend to agree with them that would probably work for sure, but it would make it really messy. And the question is, would it make it more or less messy than my aluminum welding attempt is going to be? So we'll find out. Of course, I can't do this in place, so I need to take these little metal, I think they're steel pins out um, to get this plate separate. And then I'm gonna have to grind the paint off near the welding area and probably somewhere else to hook a clamp to. So I haven't come up with a good way to push these pins out. We're just gonna try drilling it because, heck, why not apply some force? Yeah, so I can't push those guys out. I can't drill them out. I tried screwing a screw into the center of them to pull them out. I am going to have to hacksaw this thing in the middle just to get this piece off. I'm not even sure I'm gonna be able to get the other two off, but at least if this one's free, I can stick it in there. I'm not worried about putting something back in because I figure I can always put a screw through that thing. Um, but that, those steel pins they have in there are the real deal. Alright, so I, how I eventually got this guy off is I used a rotary grinder to cut through both sides of the steel pin. So the steel pin is still inside of the two pieces of aluminum there. This one here has kind of got pushed out a little bit. I'm hopeful that with a pair of needle nose pliers I might be able to pull that out. And I'm hoping I'll be able to push this guy out from one side or the other um, because it's only connected in, in the one side instead of both sides now. And I can get this in better fixturing now that it's not hanging on that aluminum bar. Yeah, so the pin on this side, I pushed it through that way really easily. It pulled out super easy. You know, you can see it's a pretty thick pin. It's, it's a rolled piece of steel, um, and it's relatively thick there. Now, the other one is still stuck in there pretty well. I'm hopeful I'll be able to get it out. So looking at how this fits, it doesn't really fit well like that. It only fits well like this. So it's obvious it was pulled out and snapped off that way. I'm worrying about how I'm going to attach that vein when I'm done. An M3 screw goes through these holes just fine. There's no room for threading. I could drill one side out and tap the other side to M4 and put an M4 in there and have it hold itself. Or I could just put a nut on the other side over here. Now if I go with an M4 screw, I'm going to have to drill this guy out just slightly as well. So I can clamp this guy in place, but it's a little, little bit wiggly. Not too bad. After careful consideration, I've decided I need to remove this entire piece out here if I'm going to try welding it, because I need that thing fixtured and held just perfectly, and I'm not going to be messing around with it, floating around on these guys. So I'm going to use my rotary cutter. I'm going to cut off the um, pins on the inside here on either side of the aluminum struts and then push them in. It seems like if I push them in, um, they go in a little easier than they come out. And so I'm just going to take the next two off and take those all off. So I've determined that turning this thing upside down is going to give me the best access. Well, if you're just trying to get it off, cutting those pins is the easy way. Um, but now I have half of each pin stuck in the aluminum in here. Um, that was relatively easy to get out with the last set. Like this guy here, I can push, and I can push it from both directions and it's moving in there. Um, so I'm hopeful that I'll just be able to pull it out with a pair of needle nose pliers once I get it far enough out. So that was super easy. Um, now it might be that the other side is the side that they've fixed because on my previous one, one side moves super easy and that was a really real bear to get the other side out. So I think what they do is they stick it in and then they do something like they hammer it and expand it or something. So this one here doesn't seem to want to be 
coming out quite as easily. Um, you know, I'm not being able to just push it and move it in and out there. So it's possible I messed up the thing by getting too close to the aluminum with my cutting wheel. But I think, given my past experience with this side over here, is that maybe one side is fixed and the other side is not. So in here, I see this guy moves in and out pretty easily. Whereas this one here, let's see it doesn't appear to. So it looks like one side is somehow crimped in and the other side is just mostly hanging. All right, I'm using my vise as a makeshift arbor press here. Um, M3 screw goes through the holes very nicely. I have a quarter by 20 nut so that the pin can come out the other side and basically just by pushing on this thing, I'm able to push an M3 screw through that, push this pin out the other side, almost all the way out. And once I get it that far out, I'm sure hopeful that my, there we go, needle nose pliers will get that. Okay, so that guy's done. Let's do that again. That worked out quite well. All right, so final technique that seems to work really well. If you get half the pin out and you have the other half of the pin stuck in over here, put an M3 machine screw through this side, line it up with the pin on that side, that'll push and then you just need a basically a thing here so it can come out. I'm just using this, you can use anything that makes a hole there. Um, and the hardest part is getting it all lined up while you're putting it into your vise. And assuming you have that screw lined up right, it's taking a decent amount of force from my vise to get that guy to go through, but I got this guy coming out the other side there, so that works pretty well, but this guy was in there pretty well. Now, could I have done that with a C-clamp while this guy was mounted? I'm not certain I could have. I think I kind of needed this hole here for alignment purposes because if you just kind of set it right on the edge, I don't think it would go in. I tried doing things like that, maybe not in this exact setup. So you might try doing that with a C-clamp while it's mounted still and see if you can get the entire pin pushed out. Um, but I was only successful in having that work with half the pin in and having cut it out already. All right, so an hour of work to take this guy off. And I'm going to have to replace all those pins with M3 machine screws. Now I can take it over to the grinder and grind off all of this paint or powder coating near the weld area. Okay, so I cleared off a little area over here to connect a grounding clamp to. Um, cleared off around where the weld's going to be. If you look at it carefully here, you can see that this fits nicely at an angle, but I'm gonna to try to weld it flat. And so because of that, it's going to have a gap in here uh, at the top where it kind of it popped and broke away. Um, so I'm definitely gonna to have to have a little bit of filler in there. Not too much, I don't think. Um, we're gonna see how this works. Like I said, I'm not a welder. Okay, so I have this in the vise. It's not going anywhere. I had to put a shim, a wood shim in here to get the angle right so this guy would clamp correctly. It has an opening at the top there you can see where, you know, it when it bent and ripped off this way, it kind of mangled the metal. So this is nice and flat to that. So if I make that weld successfully, it'll be in the right orientation and I won't have to bend it in place after the weld or anything like that. There is, of course, a danger of catching this guy on fire. But I'm a good, what, three quarters of an inch away? It's not like I don't have one of these sitting right there. I think that went better than uh, I was hoping. So that's not perfect, but it's not horrible. Um, had a little fire on the wood, of course, but now this piece is connected right there in the center. Now I have two gaps on either side. I've melted this bit away here, so obviously 120 amps is too high. I'm gonna go down to like 80 um, and do little small sections. Nothing I can do about this corner melting down a bit there, but all in all, it's it might have twisted down just slightly with the heat there. It, it definitely twisted in my vise. Um, but this guy's pretty much in 
line with where it needs to be. So I think it's a pretty good connection. It survived wire brushing with no problems and I'm not able to pull it apart, so that's a good sign. So we're gonna do two more little tacks here and hopefully call this thing good after I do some filing. Alright, settings for anyone following along, I'm using 85 amps, the pulse is off, AC balance is 80%, AC frequency is 150. Alright, so post-mortem, I used a little too much rod on the top, I have a lot of extra rod material on the top. I went back and floated around, and um, it's moderately okay, we'll see what it looks like after I file it. Alright, so I went back around the bottom and basically put just a little bit of filler in and then spread it all around. So hopefully that bottom is connected well now. I found that M3 by 20 socket head uh, machine screws fit pretty well here with just enough room for a uh, nut at the end. It's uh, close enough fit in the hole, I don't think I'm going to need a uh, washer on that. So that groove doesn't exist on this guy. I'm going to have to put a file through there and groove that out, especially in this weld right here in the middle, because you can see on this guy here, that groove is cut in there. All right, I did a little bit of filing, and I can get this on, but it's not quite flipping up to the top yet. It's almost there. I just need to do just a little bit more filing on the inside there. All right, so this little guy here is just slightly off a level. Um, only gonna be an issue if I try to put a tray on top of it or something. Um, but the important thing is that the tripod is level. So those guys are keeping the legs the right distance apart. Coat of black paint will hide all ills. All right, with a little bit of paint. Looks pretty darn good.